So it's been over 17 years since the Dawn of the Dead remake came out in theatres for the first time. Zack Snyder's first film was one that helped to revitalise the zombie genre and show what the auteur traits of the director really were. In the build up to his new film Army of the Dead on Netflix, I'm going to be breaking down Snyder's first directorial efforts in Dawn of the Dead and discussing my overall thoughts on the film so many years later. I have also covered a lot of his work on the channel over the last few months, so I will be looking at more films by the director as time passes. If you want to keep up to date with all of this content, alongside Army of the Dead when it releases next week, then don't forget to support this video by giving it a like rating, subscribing to the channel, and turning on your notifications. Also, feel free to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, and Instagram at Cortex Videos, which is all linked in the description. But without further ado, let's dive into Zack Snyder's 2004 zombie film, Dawn of the Dead. So Zack Snyder was a director with a background in music videos who would eventually cross over into feature filmmaking with a remake of George Romero's 1978 zombie film, Dawn of the Dead. Snyder's version hit theatres on March the 19th, 2004, and in this movie, the characters aren't superheroes or Spartan warriors. Instead, we get a movie with everyday people who are thrusted together in an extraordinary situation. This dose of humanity makes Dawn of the Dead more down-to-earth and relatable through the perspectives we follow, and with a screenplay by James Gunn, who would also go on to become a key figure in the comic book movie genre, this is Snyder's most bare-bones film, and it's also one of his best. When it comes to zombies, 28 Days Later's rage-infected bunch are largely responsible for revitalising the genre, thanks to Danny Boyle and Alex Garland's vision. These two filmmakers saw potential in this area of cinema that had yet to be unlocked. While Romero, the king of the modern zombie film, used the apocalypse to comment on society's greed, Boyle and Garland discovered a more personal story. How do you find the will to survive in a world where you might be forced to watch your loved ones die, try and kill you, or force you to kill them? This, coupled with the manic speed of Boyle and Garland's zombies, is what Snyder tried to infuse into his remake of Romero's masterpiece. However, Snyder's Dawn of the Dead isn't much a remake as it is a reimagining of the original that doesn't go quite for the thinly veiled criticism of American consumerism that is Romero's thesis. About the only resemblance to the original is the remake's main setting, a couple of cameos, and some references to Romero's film. Snyder's Dawn of the Dead is purely an entertainment piece, full of set pieces and scary moments. But this is what makes it all the better, as Snyder directs a critically and financially successful horror movie remake, which is a huge accomplishment in itself. All of the auteur traits of Snyder's built career are on display in Dawn of the Dead, whether it be the brutal storytelling, the desaturated colour palette, or the epic action sequences. When looking at Dawn of the Dead's opening sequence, we also get something that is quite classic, with Snyder demonstrating his great use of openings to create a tone that the movie will run with. Starting out in a hospital which isn't abandoned, and instead still buzzing with life, the movie begins in pre-apocalypse. As a genre artifact, Dawn of the Dead is perhaps best remembered for this cold open. It's 11 and a half minutes before the film's title appears on screen and its opening credits begin. In that time, Zack Snyder manages to draw us into the life of one character and open up the world around her to where it shows a citywide end of the world nightmare. Sarah Polly's character Anna isn't a warrior with powers, instead she's a nurse at the end of a long shift who just wants to get home so she can have a nice night with her husband. 
As the movie fades in, we see her standing in the hallway next to a doctor talking about golf, without them realising that the world is about to go insane. And enter the Dawn of the Dead credit sequence, which is still one of the best Snyder has done to date. There are the shots of riots combined with zombie attacks and other horror elements that are all played to The Man Comes Around by Johnny Cash, and there are few title sequences that have created the same effect. The tone of the movie is established and it sets up the first chapter that ends with Anna waking up to the world gone mad. The idea of having a song about the end of times sung by one of the best musicians to help the film better differentiate itself from the original pays off massively. Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead is a new version of the classic opposed to a shot by shot remake of the original. Yes, the movie has the same basic premise of there's a zombie outbreak, survivors take refuge, things get hectic and survivors make an escape. But at the same time, it doesn't follow the 1978 version beat for beat. What I love is how Zack Snyder and James Gunn's approach to the story finds a balance of drawing from the original while also doing its own thing. Still, there are a ton of great callbacks to George A. Romero's horror classic though, and this weirdly makes it more rewatchable when combined with all the new elements that the film has to offer. Zack Snyder and his team included everything from the classic line of When There's No More Room in Hell, Tom Savini in a Monroeville sheriff's uniform, the TV helicopter, Scott Rayner appearing as a general, and even the Galen Ross department store. But in Dawn of the Dead, we get a film which is driven by the situation, and it's not the characters who are larger than life. We see this in the way the characters try to cope with the situation, all while navigating their own human weaknesses. The movie begins with a flaming skull transitioning into an x-ray, as if to show that what's really on fire in this apocalypse is the human brain. Kenneth, a police sergeant with a US Marine Corps tattoo, initially leans into guarded self-interest. At first, he only cares about going to meet his brother, even if it means ditching these other survivors, leaving them to fend for themselves in the mall. Eventually, however, we see him embrace the group of characters he's with and forge a rooftop connection with a gun store owner, Andy. Michael Kelly, who's gone to play numerous roles you might know of, is less recognisable with a moustache and a security guard hat. But his character, CJ, tries to take a bit out of the situation. He controls them all until the other survivors overthrow him and set him on a redemption arc. Andre has perhaps the most bonkers arc in the film, believing it's his purpose in life to bring his baby into the world, and he's the one who loses his grip on sanity, tying his infected wife to a bed and attending the delivery of their zombie baby. They may be caught up in everything going on, but all of these characters react to the stress and trauma in very human ways. Maybe that's the secret to the movie's success and quality, as if you remove the whole plot of a zombie outbreak, what you'd have is just a story about people undergoing an increasingly bad survival situation. Snyder's Dawn of the Dead is one of those rare remakes that can live side by side with the original without losing its identity. Perhaps recognising that no one could do it better than the legendary George Romero, Gunn's script downplays the social commentary of the original, but makes up for it by exploiting the setting more and giving us crazy moments like the zombie birth. At their best, zombie stories often function as a metaphor for holding on to one's own humanity in an increasingly hostile world. 2004's Dawn of the Dead was one of the films that paved the way for series like The Walking Dead, and Snyder's film used a more modern sensibility to bring Romero's B-movie zombies into the mainstream. Its hyperkinetic undead portray the dawn of a new period with an increased pace and shorter attention spans. And the fake-out ending helps to really portray all the themes and the approach that I've discussed. The conclusion of Dawn of the Dead is grim and the false sense of hope capitalises on the movie as a whole. 
at the end of the movie, following the true ending, everyone is presumably dead after meeting the undead welcoming party. But even before that, with the quick cuts of handheld footage of the survivor's mood slowly changing, prepares you for what is about to happen. The foreshadowing really drives the message home that no one is going to survive this situation. All these things being said though, Dawn of the Dead is not a perfect movie as it has tonal problems, but the nostalgia coupled with the new infusion of modern energy makes this film one in Zack Snyder's filmography that is worth a rewatch and can definitely build the excitement for his upcoming project. But that was my video essay for Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead remake, and why I think the film perfectly introduces us to the filmmaker through the zombie genre. Dawn of the Dead highlighted how Snyder tells his stories visually, but also includes the character and emotion you'd expect from an intense situation. Coupled with James Gunn's sensibilities, there's a great creative synergy on display, and it's no coincidence that both directors wound up making their names on comic book movies later in their careers, with visual styles for also staging memorable moments to music in their films. Zack Snyder will also be producing The Suicide Squad, which means that he and Gunn have come full circle and will soon be reunited on their next theatrical release. As a director, Snyder's own DC Comics superhero days may be behind him, and of course we hope not after the Snyder Cut, but it's reassuring to know that he's got a new zombie movie, Army of the Dead, arriving on the Netflix horizon. We'll have to see how Army of the Dead turns out when it releases on Netflix this week, and I will be doing videos on the film, so look out for all of the content that I post. But let me know down below what your thoughts are towards 2004's Dawn of the Dead, and do you agree with the points that I have raised in this breakdown? For more videos on Zack Snyder's work, including the director's cut of Justice League and Army of the Dead when it releases this week, then subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Also, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like rating and follow me on social media via the links in the description. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've been Cortex, and as always, make some noise.